Long time no see, Amy. Are you still alive? <laughs> Jack? Yo, what's up? What do you mean, yo? You didn't come home this Christmas again. This is the sixth year you haven't come. It's alright, even if it's just for a day. Just come visit us once in a while. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'll visit you guys this weekend. What? Really? Does that mean you'll be living here again? Yep. But what are you going to do about work? There's no way you'll be able to commute four hours to work every day. Wait, did you change jobs? No, <laughs> that's not it. Then why? Obviously it's because I quit. <laughs> what? You quit? But didn't you graduate a famous university and get a job at a huge company? You even boasted so much when you got the job. Well, you see, I made a huge fortune investing in stocks. What? Stocks? Yep, I've gotten so good at it that I could become a day trader if I wanted. It seems that not only was I talented, I was actually a genius. Wait a minute. Huh? I knew you were smart, but becoming a day trader can't be that easy. Did you actually study how to trade stocks? I learned it by actually doing it. And what did you do? I started trading stocks with the market and learned on my way. That sounds pretty risky. <clears throat> yeah, but it worked out since I'm a genius. Judging by how you're talking about this, I assume you've been doing this for a while now? When did you start? Two months ago. What? Just two months? Yep, I really must be a genius if I can figure out how to trade stocks in just two months. No way. There's no way you can learn how to trade stocks in just two months. Why? Do you have experience trading stocks? No, but... Then quit trying to lecture me! But why do you have to quit your other job? It's fine, if I say it's alright, it's alright. I'm a genius, remember? If you keep bothering me, I'm not gonna help you when you need any money, alright? Anyways, it's decided that you'll be returning here? Yep, I already cancelled the contract with my current apartment. Got it. Your room's the same way it was six years ago when you left. So just clean it up and move in there, okay? Well, just do it for me, please, Amy. I'm pretty busy myself. It's hard to believe you when you're not even married, live in your parents' house, and don't even have a boyfriend. Shut it. You're already an adult, right? You should be able to clean up your own room. I got it. I'll be bringing my stuff on the truck this weekend, so open up a place to park for me, alright? Fine. Take care. Are you outside, Amy? I wanted to ask you for help carrying my stuff. Oh, you're already there? You had a key? Yes, yeah, so I just opened the door and went in. Where are you? I was suddenly called to work and had to go to the office. I'll be home by evening. Is that so? Where are mom and dad? Those two are... Well, it's the usual. What do you mean? Actually, who cares? Just help me when you get home, all right? Actually, I'll probably still have to work, so I won't be able to help. You know what? You keep talking about work, but aren't you an unemployed woman living with her parents? <laughs> what? You're lying about work, aren't you? You're just killing time outside and you don't want to help me. I don't know what idea you have in your head, but it's true that I have a job, you know? What? I just work from home most of the time. I just had to go out today to talk in person to my client. What? That sounds so much like a lie. Why? You always mention how you text mom and dad. Haven't you been living at their house for the past six years ever since you quit the last company you worked for? 
I'm saying that it's embarrassing that my sister, who's already in her 30s, is still depending on her parents. Oh. So that's what they said about me. I'm not even unemployed. I just work from home. That's the excuse people like you always give. Anyways, the neighbors know that I work from home, so there's really no need to be embarrassed. That's just what you think. <laughs> Besides, there's no way to get a job that lets you work from home if you didn't even go to college. Things like that can only be done by people with a certain level of smarts and skills. But I do have some skills. These skills you're talking about are probably the type that no company is ever going to want. <laughs> Which is why you must actually be unemployed. Um... Why do you have zero understanding for people who work from home? Aren't you younger than me? That head of yours must be getting old. Are you alright? You've got some courage saying that to me, the genius. <laughs> It's fine if you return home, just don't bother my work. Bother you? You're the one who needs to get an actual job and stop being a bother, Amy. I don't care whether you're poor and have no income. I'm not going to be lending you any of my money. I said I have a job. Alright, I see how it is. <laughs> I'll make some food, okay? I told you, I won't be home until evening. Seriously? I only ate instant ramen for breakfast, so I'm really hungry. Jesus. Well, it's obvious you haven't been eating well. There's some stir-fried vegetables in the fridge left over, so eat that. What? Stir-fried vegetables? How lame. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Fine. Oh, be sure to ask Dad first if you're going to drink the beer. He gets really mad if you just drink it without asking. Alright. Could you leave the house already? What? What's this about suddenly? I'm sick of having to pay for someone who doesn't have a job. Are you talking about me? Who else would I be talking about? <laughs> and what about you? What are you doing in your room all day? I'm checking stock values. I need to monitor the market to determine which stocks will be profitable. This is my job. Is that actually all right? Making a living off of stock trading seems even harder than working from home. It's fine. I'm a genius after all. I, for one, think that you should be more careful, though. I said I'm fine. I'm not gonna fail. I see. Well, I've got to attend a meeting, so I'll be leaving the house. There's curry in the fridge if you want something to eat for lunch. Got it. Jack! Is this your doing? What is it? My stuff's outside the house! Um, yeah, that was me. Me plus mom and dad. What? I talked to mom and dad about kicking you out of the house. Since you don't even have a job of your own. They strongly agreed to my plan. You were planning on moving all your stuff outside the house while you were outside. Everything in your room's right there. What? Why you... How many times do I have to tell you that I have a job? They said to take the stuff by tomorrow morning. You better take it away as soon as possible. Oh, we changed the house keys so you won't be able to come in anymore. <laughs> so you really do want to kick me out, huh? The way you say it is a bit harsh. I just want you to become an actual adult that contributes to society, Amy. So I'm just making it so that you'll have to. What are you going to do with the house? The rent is no problem. After all, I'm a rich genius. Okay. So you really want me to leave? Yep, definitely. Oh, is it that you're in trouble since you've got no place to go? 
I mean, you are the person who lived off of her parents' money for the last six years. So I guess it was to be expected. Fine, I'll give you ten cents and get out of the house already, will you? <laughs> Don't come back. So does that mean you're cutting ties with me? Thanks. What do you mean by that? Why do you sound happy? Take care of him for me, will you? Oh, I don't need the ten cents. What, what are you talking about? Bye then. Um, what? I thought you'd be more sad. Amy? Amy! Something terrible's happened, what should I do? Um, I thought you guys cut ties with me. The value of the stocks went down in value hard! Stocks? Are you talking about the stocks you bought? Yes, it was fine until yesterday, but then suddenly... I woke up and checked the stock values and they dropped enormously! Um, are you talking about A Engineering? What? How do you know? Haven't you been watching the news? The news? I only skimmed through an article, so I don't really know the details, but they've been talking about how there's been an incident within the company since last night. Seriously? I don't know much about stocks, but aren't stock values heavily influenced by the current situation of the company? So that's why the value suddenly dropped? Probably. Oh, what a mess. And? Why'd you contact me? Um... I forgot to block you. But stop contacting me, will you? I thought you cut ties with me. I need money! What? Things have turned into a real mess ever since the values of my stocks dropped. What do you mean? I decided to take a risk and invest a large amount of money, so I got a loan of 40k. Seriously? You're in that much debt? Yep, yeah, but I have no way of giving it back, so please give me some money. It seems that even though you were poor and unemployed, you got enough money to find a new house. You got some money, right? Um, I do have the money, but I'm not giving you any. What? Why should I give someone I cut ties with any money? I'll apologize for kicking you out of the house. Even if you're unemployed, you can still find a job while living at this house. How many times do I have to tell you that I'm not unemployed? Aren't you the one who needs to find a job? Huh? The rent costs 1k per month at that house. But mom and dad just spend the whole day at the casino and don't have a job, so... What? Dad doesn't have a job? You didn't know? But doesn't he leave the house in the morning every day saying he's off to work? Apparently he considers gambling a profession. What? Hey, Jack, you don't know that our late grandfather and I were the ones who paid for your college tuition and not mom and dad, do you? Really? What do you mean? You see, our family depended on our late grandfather who owned his own business for money before I got a job. Once he was gone, mom and dad immediately used up all of the money they received as inheritance on gambling. I've been supporting the family since three years back. But for some reason, Mom and Dad still think they're living off of the inheritance money. They won't believe it when I tell them that they're living off of the money I earn working. Which is why, now that I'm gone, you'll either have to support them on your own or convince them to start working. Please come home, Amy! What? Why? It's bad enough that I lost my stocks and now in debt, but I have to support mom and dad as well. 
Just get a job and be enough? I have no intention of returning. Why? I'm begging you! Aren't you the one who kicked me out? I said I'll apologize! Besides, how do you plan on making a living when you don't even have a job? I'm honestly curious what kind of brain this genius, who after hearing everything I said still believes that I'm unemployed, has. But I'm actually a freelance web designer. Huh? I'm actually pretty busy. I've got work I need to do before the deadline. So I really don't have the time to be texting you. Um, Amy? Goodbye for real this time. I found out later on from a relative as to why Jack started trading stocks. Apparently he had a colleague who was an expert and made a huge profit after following his advice. He got hooked and bought some more stocks and was lucky enough to make another huge profit. But that was the end of his luck. He must have thought he had a talent for it and quit his old job without thinking about the future. Jack now supports mom and dad at their house with multiple part-time jobs. He's got his own debt to pay on top of that, so obviously he has no time off. Now that I'm gone, no one in that house does any housework anymore. It's basically a garbage dump now. It's a rented house, so they'll probably be kicked out. Which is what a relative said while sighing. Mrs. Anderson, did you eat the strawberries that were in the fridge again? I was saving those for myself. Oh my, I'm sorry. I made some strawberry jam with them. Ugh, I can't believe you. Those were expensive. You can only get them at selected shops. They were imported straight from Japan. But they seemed like they were about to start molding. I've been thinking about this for a while. But you need to make sure to only buy food in quantities that you feel confident in finishing. I understand that you like to take your time eating those nice things, but you always end up letting them spoil. It's just a waste. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I ask for your opinion? I don't need to hear anything from a person who's too poor to afford nice things. You wouldn't understand how it feels to cherish these things. Hmm. Did you just call me poor? Ugh. This is too frustrating. I can't take this anymore. I only decided to move in with you because Larry told me that there would be a bunch of benefits for me. But all you provide for the two of us is stress. <laughs> what? You use the nice things that I buy without any permission. You only pay a small fraction of the rent. And worst of all, you don't even spoil your daughter-in-law regardless of how much she's done for you. I'm sorry, but what have you done for me? I let you live with me! Didn't Larry let you know that he wanted to live with me before the two of you decided to get married? That doesn't matter! I can't take this anymore! I've decided that I'm going to stop acting like the nice little housewife that I always try to be. I'm going to stop myself being such a sweet soul to you. And I'm taking better care of myself. Have you ever really been kind to me? You call yourself a housewife and try to look nice in front of Larry. But we both know that the truth is that I always do the housework. While you lie down on the couch. Scrawling on your phone. Shut your mouth, you peasant! Don't you dare speak to me like that! You need to keep in mind that the only reason that you have a place to live is because my husband and I are kind enough to provide for you. Larry, I need to tell me what you told Molly to convince her to live with me. Huh? What do you mean, Mom? She just threw all of her anger at me that this isn't what she signed up for. 
and that you told her that there would be benefits on her side by living with me. She even went as far to call me a peasant, and that I should be ashamed of not being able to spoil her. Molly told me that you were the one who came up with the idea to live with me and that you convinced her to do so. So I need to know what you told her. Just come clean with it. I need to know this to straighten out this whole situation. Besides, I've been having a feeling that you're lying to me for a while now. What? I mean, you had a bunch of money inherited to you when Dad died, didn't you? You worked at a decent company, so I imagine the insurance was great. Therefore, I figured that you had enough to be well off for the rest of your life. Maybe even better than well off. So I told Molly that you would support us a pretty good amount per month if we let you stay over at our place. So we had a discussion and decided that it would be best to rent the money that we need for now and have you support us to pay it back. And you tried to ask me to live with you guys without raising any suspicions by keeping something so huge from me? Wow. I remember how happy I was when Molly told me that she wanted to keep me close for when I grew old. It was all about just money, huh? You don't have to say it like that, Mom. Don't you enjoy our company? After finding out about your motives, no, I don't. You turned Molly into a cold-hearted liar. Now all she does is complain about my presence and call me poor. I should never have even bothered living with the two of you. So explain everything to Molly right now. That there was never a conversation about me providing for the two of you and that you lied about it. And while you're at it, apologize and tell her that you'll single-handedly provide from her from now on. What? How did our conversation end up in that direction? You're supposed to be understanding and help us more with future payments. Why would I do that? Because Molly isn't the same girl as the girl I met either. Ever since my salary started going down, she's been constantly irritated about my presence too. Thanks to that, she and I haven't been doing so well as a couple. I can't say that I didn't notice how her behavior towards you had changed as well. Even in this situation, I believed that you would help me. Because you're my mother, and that's what mothers should do for their sons. But you didn't even bother offering help. And now you're trying to abandon me in this situation and leave everything in my hands. Don't you see how harsh you're being? You're my mother, so do something. Are you kidding me? How old are you? Someone your age needs to pick up their crap and finally become independent. I'm the one who should be asking you if you're kidding me right now. What kind of mother behaves like that to her son? If you're going to be so cold, then fine. I see how it is. I could kick you out of the house as soon as I want. You are going to kick me out? Even though you're the one who suggested that I live with you in the first place. If that happens, you're going to be in big trouble, aren't you? You sold our house and all of the land that you owned before moving in with us. You have nowhere to go back to, right? You don't want to become homeless at that age, do you? All you have to do to avoid that outcome is to stay in that house and keep paying your rent to us. I can't believe this. You're threatening me. I've raised my son into a monster. Come on, I'm just negotiating, Mom. Besides, you still have the money that you earned by selling our old house, didn't you? I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to pay a little bit of rent every month. I look forward to our business together. Well, we couldn't have had such a nice house without you, so... Thank you for your support. When are you going to pay your rent for this month? Larry told me that you would be paying $3,000 for rent this month. Why have you not still paid us? What? 3000 What kind of joke is that? Are you telling me that Larry lied to me again? Why does he always lie to get out of trouble when he knows that he's going to get caught? Never mind then, I'll just tell you myself. Larry and I will be asking for $3,000 each month as rent from now on. Are we clear? You can manage to do that, right? No, I can't. I already pay an amount that will pay well over my expenses in a month. And now you're asking for 3000 a month? I'm only paying the same amount that I used to. $1,000 for each month is enough. I guess this means our negotiation has failed. I'll pack up your things and leave them outside. So gather those things and please leave. What? 
this is your last chance to change your mind. If you promise to pay $3,000 every month, then we'll let this incident slide. I won't throw your things outside. So, what's it going to be? Are you going to pay $3,000 each month as rent? Or are you going to be homeless and spend your nights on a bench in a park? Feel free to make the choices that fits your preference. <laughs> I can't believe you. You can't just kick someone out like that. As you've already figured out by now, I'm barely getting by at this point, thanks to your dumb little son who couldn't manage to keep his job. You don't have the option to keep another mouth to feed for free. You don't keep me around for free. I pay my part of the expenses. And you say that you don't have the option? But I don't see you getting a job either. Stop arguing with me. My job is to take care of the house. I'm not going to go out and work like a peasant. So you need to pay rent and account for that. How does that make any sense? But you choose to ignore our needs and neglect your part in supporting us. Have you used up all of the money that you earned through selling your house already or something? It's my money, and I get to use it however I want. How selfish can you be? You use all of your money for yourself while your son and daughter-in-law are struggling to get by. I can't imagine how easy it must be to rely on someone else to live while not making any contributions whatsoever. <laughs> but that ends now. If you can't pay your rent, then get out of my house this instant. So that's all I was to you, huh? You never cared about me. You just wanted to use me as an ATM. Well then, I'm glad to leave. <laughs> Shut up, you poor old hag. I mean, what else did you expect to be to us? The only good that you do is pay us. So I think it's fair that we only see you as an ATM. You're not worth the space in our house. You need to leave and never show up ever again. There's literally no point in letting you live with us, you parasite. I guess I'll move into the luxury nursery home with a built-in country club in the town next door. <laughs> Seriously? I guess he got his habit of lying from you. I'm being serious. And where on earth do you think you're going to get the money for that? I have every single cent that I need to afford it. I currently have two million dollars worth of assets. So you can probably do the math that I have enough to spend a lifetime in a nice place like that. Two million? How? I think I'll get going now. I promised my friend that we would go have some tea together, so I'll go do that. As a matter of fact, I'll stay at a friend's house for tonight. So please leave my things at your front door. I'll be moving into my dream environment after that, so you won't have to see me ever again. <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking. You're kidding about the two million dollars, right? Even if your husband passed away and left an inheritance, two million dollars is unrealistic. No, oh, it's not my husband's. I made it myself when I was younger. <laughs> what? Yes, I bought some real estate with the money that my husband left behind. So I have five million dollars if you include that. I hit the jackpot with the apartment I bought and started renting out. You have five million dollars? How? Because I plan ahead and save up money before I make financial decisions. Unlike your dumb little husband. The whole situation doesn't make any sense. Even your son hasn't told me anything about money like that. I'm sure he'd be aware if you had the assets like that. I've actually never mentioned it to him before. I sold the company that I was running at the time as soon as he was born. So, you sold your company? You're trying to tell me that you were a business owner? Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. I was a big, 
risk taker when I was younger. I started lots of businesses, and most of them failed, but one of them really took off, and it expanded to a pretty good scale. <laughs> I can't believe this. I married my husband right after that, though. So, I ended up selling the company for a pretty good time. I found it more important to marry and devote myself to the love of my life. Therefore, I sacrificed the potential of becoming a billionaire to pursue it. How could you sell your company for a reason like that? Are you stupid? Do you think so? Because through my eyes, it seems like you and I are doing the exact same things, quitting our jobs to become housewives. I just wanted to support my husband with everything I had, so I did exactly that. He was very kind, but he had trouble balancing his tasks, so I had to step in all of the time, and I enjoyed it a lot. The money that I got was just a bonus. <laughs> and that's how you got two million dollars? Exactly. So that's probably why Larry never mentioned it to you. He simply only knew me as a housewife. The subject just never came up, because we were all happy with the situation that I created. Ugh, my brain can't keep up with all of this. Then, you can look it up the internet tonight. The company is still pretty large in scale. I'm sure you can find my Wikipedia or something as its founder. Mom, what do you mean you used to own a business? Why did you never tell me about this? And your savings? That should have been the first thing to bring up when you started living with us. Let me ask you this. Why would I have to tell you what my savings are? In fact, why should I even financially support you? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. This is my money, so I get to use it however I want to. Is there some type of law that obligates me to help you out because I'm your mother? But I'm your son. Isn't helping me out when I'm struggling the normal thing to do? You don't get it, do you? I'm not going to help you. Especially because you're my son. I care for you. So I need you to learn how to keep going on your own. Come on, Mon. Don't be like that. Look, I'm sorry about all of the things that Molly said to you. I really am. And I'll make sure that she understands her faults too. So, can you please come back and live with us? Molly is saying she'll do all the housework from now on. And I'm sure things are going to work out this time. All you need to do is support us the way you always did. And all are going to be well. Sorry, but I just finished shining up for the nursing home that I was talking about earlier. So, no. I won't be moving back with the two of you anymore. What? Have you already finished signing up? I mean, I can't just stay at a friend's house forever, can I? The place I'm moving to has a whole building to itself. So I'll be spending the rest of my life shopping and sipping margaritas next to a pool. My friend even said that she's moving in with me. So we'll be having the time of our life. They own a whole building? And a country club is inside. How much is that going to cost you? You could save so much money living with us instead. I'd rather use everything I have on myself than let you two parasites steal from me. I hope you and Molly live happily alongside each other. Don't mind me anymore. The poor old hag will be living in a beautiful nursing home with everything she needs to be happiest she could be. Mrs. Anderson, what have you done? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I really don't. The neighbors, they kept staring at us like we're criminals. And when we approach them, they won't even look at us in the eye. It's very difficult to live comfortably when you're surrounded by people who treat you like that. And why do you suppose that I was the one who did something? Because we haven't done anything to any of them. And this all started as you left our house. Well, I'm so very sorry for the two of you. It might be because I stopped donating to the city. What do you mean? 
I'd actually been donating to the city for a long while now. You know, giving back to your community feels great. So I'd make large donations towards schools in this area. I also donated all of the money that was used for the furniture of the city hall that was built up a while ago. I'd make donations like the above every year. You do all of that for people that you've never even met? But you still can't pay for our house. How is that fair? Because a couple of adults should be able to account for their own expenses on their own. I lived in that city, and the responsibility was partially mine. So even though I'm not strong enough to participate in volunteer activities, I contribute by using my wealth for the good. But now that I've left that town, I've stopped making those donations. It's not my responsibility anymore. What are we supposed to do now? Everyone knows that the two of us were the reason that you had to leave. So everyone in the city thinks of us as nuisances now? I mean, there aren't many people who are capable of making donations that scale every year. So I guess there won't be anyone to replace me. But it's none of my business anymore. And I have to go easy on spending to keep living in this environment. So all I can say is good luck. What do you mean, good luck? How are we going to keep living here if every single person hates us? Please, come back to town. <laughs> There's no way on earth that I will ever go back. I mean, who in their right mind would leave a living dream to go back to live with a crappy married couple? If the donations are the problem, then why don't you two just make the donations instead of me? It feels amazing to be able to give back to your community and be appreciated by the people at the same time. I think I've always had a thing for taking care of others. Then take care of us too. Please. Why are you so called to only us too? Because it's my policy. I only like to take care of people who I like. Do you not like us? No. I like everyone in that city because they supported me a lot when my husband first passed away. And I had to start raising Larry alone. That's when I decided that I wanted to start making the donations. I'm proud to say that I can probably make any type of sacrifice for the people who I love. But I can't do that if I hate you, right? I don't want to pay a single cent for the two of you. You hate us that much? Your own son and his wife. Yes, even a grandchild wouldn't convince me to bring the two of you into my life ever again. I can't believe you just said that. Boo-hoo. I know it'll be tough, but I hope you two get up on your feet and try to make it work there. Now, I'll go have my afternoon tea on the terrace with my friends now. Goodbye. After that, I immediately met with my lawyer and wrote the will that stated every penny in my name will be donated to non-profit organizations from all around the world. As soon as I sent a letter letting them know, Larry and Molly stopped spamming me with their emails begging me to come back. It seems that they're finally going to start working hard and taking initiatives in their own lives. Larry started studying to earn a certificate that will lead to a promotion in his workplace, and Molly started a part-time job at a cafe as well. It seems that everyone in the city still says the horrible things behind their backs and when they pass by, but they're still trying to earn back their place in the community. Hopefully, everything works out for them, and they can be proud of achieving that.